The Vatican City sits at the heart of the Christian faith and has been a recognized independent state since 1929. It has been a site of importance for much longer though, as can be seen by the extensive artworks and historic buildings in the city. But it's the power of the religion that really gives the place meaning. With such an influence through the world, the Pope and senior clergy have been privy to some of the most important events in history, and in their vaults, they keep extensive records that most people aren't allowed to see. As you can imagine, there's a lot that they've kept under wraps, but occasionally details of these see the light of day. In this video, we're going to look at 15 dark secrets that the Vatican doesn't want you to know. Before we begin, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos every day. With that being said, let's begin. <sighs> Number 15. Pope Benedict IX Popes are meant to act as an example to worshippers around the world and to live by Christian teachings to the best of their ability. Not all of them manage to do this, however. After all, they are human. But the most outrageous was undoubtedly Pope Benedict IX. He became Pope when he was just 20 years old and is the only person to have been elected Pope more than once and is the only person to have sold the papacy. He won the first election because his father bribed others to vote for him and when everyone else found out he was driven from Rome in 1036. He had few qualifications to rightfully claim to be Pope, but when he returned, he managed to regain the position before again being banished because of the way he behaved. He was believed to have repeatedly raped men, women, and animals, taken food from poor families just because he could, and even disputed the election of his successor so much that he tried to poison him. He was the epitome of an entitled youth who had no morals or any idea how to behave and was a disgrace to the church. No wonder then that you really hear about him and that regulations were brought in to try and prevent such an abuse of the papacy from ever happening again. Time for the rear topic. Now this photo of course has been edited, but the reason why this has been done is to draw attention to the alien and the Pope. The archives in the Vatican hold huge amounts of records that have been kept away from prying eyes, and you can't help but wonder if in the hundreds of years that the Vatican has existed, whether they've collected any evidence that aliens may exist. All our focus tends to be on our governments, but perhaps the church is the true source of the cover-up. What do you think? Does this image hint at secrets that the Vatican and the Pope are fully aware of? And could there possibly be alien artifacts or even remains held in the vaults deep beneath the city? Surely, if they knew there was life on other worlds, they'd do their best to prevent anyone from finding out about it, wouldn't they? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag, hashtag rare topic, and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. And now, to the next topic. Number 14. Pope Leo X. Leo X was the Pope between 1513 and 1521 and was a keen supporter of the arts. During his time, significant work was done to restore St. Peter's Basilica. Artists like Raphael were brought in to decorate rooms throughout the Vatican and he restructured the Roman University to encourage the study of literature, poetry and historical study. What he's best remembered for, however, were some policies that weren't exactly in line with the normal teachings of the church. One biographer said he was engrossed in idle and selfish amusements and he would often go on hunts, would encourage animal cruelty and, most worryingly, kept sexual slaves. One policy that attracted the most criticism of Leo X, however, was introducing a new way for people to be granted access to heaven. He offered an insurance policy where money and property were given to the church and in return, their sins would be absolved. It was this that led to the rise of Protestant Reformation and Lutheranism and would result in parts of the church breaking away never to be the same again. Number 13. Magdalene Asylum the story of the Magdalene Asylum is a dark moment in the church's history and one that they've still refused to accept responsibility for. The Magdalene laundries in Ireland were facilities that were run by orders from the Roman Catholic Church between the 18th and 20th centuries. They were places that were used to house so-called fallen women, but rather than helping them, they essentially imprisoned them. More than 30,000 are known to have been sent to these places and once they were there, they were never heard from again. The full extent of the treatment started to come out in 1993 when a mass grave was found in the grounds of one of these laundries which contained the remains of at least 155 women. After further investigation, the horrific conditions they were kept in and the degrading treatment they were subjected to led to the Irish government issuing a formal apology in 2013 for allowing it to take place in their country. A £50 million fund was set up to pay compensation to survivors who had once been forced to stay in one of the asylums. But the church is yet to either contribute to this fund or apologize themselves. Number 12. Nazi Gold 
It's a well-known fact that the Vatican is immensely wealthy thanks to historical investments and donations from around the world, but not all of their funds have been raised by honorable means. A damning report that was sent to the US State Department in 1946 by a US Treasury agent named Emerson Bigelow showed his findings after trying to trace the movements of Nazi gold following the Second World War. In it, it said that the Vatican had confiscated 350 million Swiss francs worth of Nazi gold and pledged to keep it safe and that half of that sum had been impounded at the border for a brief period of time. The gold was kept in a Swiss bank account and then 200 million francs of coins were, in the end, transferred back to the Vatican Bank thanks to efforts by clergy across the continent. The question is, is it ethical that the Vatican is sat on such a valuable resource that was originally stolen from the victims of the Nazis? Artworks that have been proved to have been taken from families are returned to them, so why shouldn't the gold? Even the amounts that can't be traced back to the original owners surely shouldn't be sitting in the accounts of the Vatican. Wouldn't they be better used to pay restoration to victim groups and to help remember why we must never let such extreme ideologies ever take control of a country ever again? Number 11. History of Vatican Banks The Institute for the Works of Religion, which is more commonly known as the Vatican Bank, is a very wealthy private bank that has its origins in the beginning of the papacy. Over the past 1800 years, it was responsible for collecting taxes from the surrounding states to fund the work being done in the Vatican and now is estimated to hold billions of euros. With very little oversight, the bank has been involved with a number of scandals in its time. Historically, it used money to influence political and social upheaval across Italy and around the world. And with an ethos that was inherently anti-capitalist, they supported various communist parties with the hope they would be elected in influential countries. Possibly, biggest scandal of all came to light in 1978 when the Holy See was associated with fraudulent payments through another bank, the Banco Ambronciano. They had been found to have transferred billions of lira illegally and a few weeks before the collapse of the bank, a letter was sent to the Pope warning him that the church would face the gravest losses. The letter suggested that the Pope knew about all of the dodgy dealings and had been complicit in them, which raised vital questions of how involved in these matters the church should be. Since then, there has been a full overhaul of how Vatican funds are used and invested, with the hope that they'll never get caught up in something like this ever again. Number 10. Vatican Rat Lines While the church espouses notions of treating people right and taking care of one another, they were found out for taking these ideas way too far following World War II. The war had taken a massive toll on the continent of Europe especially, and there were hundreds of people who had committed heinous acts for the Nazis that were yet to be captured and punished. The so-called Vatican Rat Lines were a series of escape routes that the church used to help Nazis and Nazi sympathizers to escape Europe in the aftermath of the ceasefire and escape prosecution. They helped people travel across two main routes, one from Germany to Spain and then Argentina, and the other that took them from Germany to Rome and then across the ocean to South America. It's because of the work of the Vatican during this time that so many Nazis managed to make their way to South American countries. Who knows whether they did this out of a sense of what was right or for far more nefarious reasons. Number 9. Exorcisms the subject of exorcism is not one that the church will talk about publicly, with many being led to think that the practice is a complete fabrication, but evidence has come to light that the Vatican is far more involved with the attempts to remove demonic possession than you would ever believe. According to Reverend Gabriel Amorth, who himself claims to have performed over 70,000 exorcisms, the rituals are commonplace in the Vatican, where people are brought from around the world to be treated, and on occasions, popes are the ones who perform the incantations, particularly when they're dealing with an especially unruly demon. It's said that at least 300 exorcisms are performed around the world each week, which makes you wonder quite how common demonic possessions actually are. Number 8. Vatican's Secret Archives The Vatican's Secret Archive, which was recently renamed as the Vatican Apostolic Archive, contains all the documents and records that the Church has accumulated over the centuries. Everything in here belongs to the Pope until his death at which point ownership is passed on to his replacement. Vetted researchers are allowed access to study some of the documents that are held here, but there are many things within the vaults that are kept far away from prying eyes, and there are lots of theories of what the church might be trying to prevent us from finding out. There are said to be 53 miles of shelves containing hundreds of thousands of documents. Some believe there are missing excerpts from the books of the Bible stored there, along with other writings from the time that have just as much right to be included in the holy text. If it wasn't for the fact they cast an unfavorable light on the church's current teachings, would there be more details on Jesus, such as supposed letters sent between St. Paul and Emperor Nero about his children, or perhaps that he didn't even exist at all? 
Some believe there are documents relating to aliens, a machine that supposedly lets you witness past and future events, and also surprisingly what's said to be the world's largest collection of pornography. Number 7. Vatican Leak Scandal In 2012, the Vatican Leak Scandal, which became jokingly known as Vati Leaks, saw a series of documents being handed to reporters that supposedly detailed evidence of corruption and blackmail being carried out by the most influential members of the church. Letters were revealed that accused the church of missing funds and potential threats against the Pope, but nothing in any of the details was particularly scandalous. The problem from the church's point of view was that this leak managed to happen in the first place. All of the documents were genuine, and while they weren't explosive, there's clearly a lot that they would rather remain a secret. So had to take steps to ensure this couldn't happen again, because who knows what might come out next. Number 6. Pedophilia and Child Abuse Probably the most well-known scandal involving the church in recent times related to the behavior of the clergy who have, for hundreds of years, been trusted with the safety of the most vulnerable people in society. It turned out that priests were taking advantage of this position of trust and were engaged in highly inappropriate behavior with youngsters at their churches, something that some of them actually felt they had a God-given right to do. Of course, not everyone in the church was doing this, but the true extent of the problem will likely never be known. Records have shown that any time any accusations were raised, the Vatican became involved in covering up the stories to ensure it didn't reflect badly on the church. Methods they used include bribes to the families of victims to keep quiet, moving priests to new locations where no one had heard of what they had supposedly done, and point-blank denial that anything was wrong. These actions made matters worse, though, because they exposed new communities to the bad actions of the clergy they were protecting, and the problem began to escalate. It first came to light in the public in the 1980s, though, and since then, popes have had no choice but to take hard a line with offenders. While it would have been naive to claim that the issue has been completely eliminated, people are far more aware of the signs to watch out for, and it's no longer perceived as the dirty little secret that members of a religious organization can't get away with. Number 5. Croatian Holocaust the Second World War saw huge atrocities conducted against certain groups of people. As some acts are far less known about than others, the Holocaust in the independent state of Croatia is the term used to refer to the genocide of Jews, Serbs, Romani, and other groups in the country during the war. And even to this day, there are people in Croatia who subscribe to a revisionist view of history and deny things were as bad as they actually were. The Vatican is said by some to have had some links to what happened there because the government that was formed after being invaded by the Axis powers, known as the Utashi, was strongly Catholic. The leader was granted a meeting with the Pope several days after burning an Orthodox church to the ground with worshippers locked inside, and Croatian clergymen worked as guards and executioners in internment camps. In the face of these terrible acts, the Vatican never spoke out against them. Following the war, the Archbishop of Zagreb, Aloysius Stepanak, was found guilty of war crimes and imprisoned. But once he was released, he was reappointed as a cardinal with the blessing of Pope John Paul II. Number 4. Stolen Babies during the 1930s, Spain was under fascist rule by Francisco Franco, and he came up with a particularly nasty plan to control his enemies. He wanted newborns brought up in the correct way, so any children born to so-called undesirable parents were taken away. In total, more than 300,000 babies were taken under this law, and they were given to new families who were better aligned with the ideology of the leadership. The problem was, it wasn't just the government of the country who carried out these orders. The Catholic Church in Spain was complicit with it too. There were countless stories of nurses in Catholic-run hospitals who told mothers that their children had died during childbirth when in fact they had been taken away and in some cases sold on for profit. They also, after a healthy birth, were said to sneak in when the mother was sleeping and walk out with the child or in some instances just brazenly took the babies while they were feeding. Many of the families would never see their children again and it sparked a serious level of distrust in the government and the church across the country. This is yet more behavior that the church has failed to apologize for because doing so would involve admitting responsibility, but their actions during that time had an everlasting effect on the communities across Spain. Number 3. Book Exposes Vatican Secrets Emiliano Fittipaldi is an Italian journalist who has dedicated a number of years to uncovering the secrets of the Vatican in order to show that they aren't the well-meaning organization that they claim to be. His research has unearthed some difficult facts about the church and in some cases has forced them to change their policies. His book, Avarice, focused on the terrible organization around the Vatican's finances and provided one stat in particular that shocked the world. For every $10 that's donated to the church, only $2 actually makes its way into schemes designed to help the poorest of society. That's an awfully low percentage, 
and one that wouldn't be accepted if it was any other charity. The question then is where do all the other $8 go? And how can they justify the extreme efforts they go to raise funds when the money that's given isn't being used to help the people that need it the most? In response to this accusation, Pope Francis said, on with his serenity and determination. Careful words chosen which really mean he's instructed officials to take a much closer look at things and expects them to rectify the problem. Number two, guidance for priests who are fathers. The church has strict rules about who can or can't become a member of the clergy. Abstinence is one of the fundamental tenets because it shows a person's dedication to God and that they aren't swayed by such carnal pleasures. This too means they can't marry or have children. But the Vatican acknowledged recently that there was actually internal guidance available to any priest who had fathered a child. In an interview with the New York Times, a spokesman said that it advises them on how to watch out for the well-being of their children, which is actually a very good thing. Instead of forcing them to keep a secret like that, it encourages them to be open about instances where they had broken their vows and even though it's frowned upon and historically would have seen them being excommunicated from the church, things are now slightly less judgmental. Of course, if they also had a document teaching about contraception, then and priests being fathers might not become so much of an issue. Number one, pedophile nuns. When you hear stories of abuse that has taken place in a church, you tend to immediately assume that it has been carried out by priests. While this is certainly a problem and accounts for the vast majority of incidents, reports are now coming out that there have been some nuns who have been behaving inappropriately as well. According to one report, 18 people have come forward to claim they have been assaulted by nuns from one convent and investigators suspect the problem could be more widespread than this. When the problem with priests was first found out, it took a long time before the full extent was understood. So, could this be another time when this same thing will happen? So far, the Vatican has failed to comment and are keeping typically silent about these crimes. But if more people come forward with accusations, they may find themselves getting dragged into another major scandal. Do you think they could survive another one like this again? Can you believe that the Vatican kept all of these things secret? Which of these was the most surprising to you? Do you think they're keeping anything else under wraps that we might one day find out about? Make sure to let us know in the comments section. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.